But yeah, I mean, there's but, like 50 Thai fighters blowing up Bo-Katan's house and Luke Skywalker's having robots build a hut on a different <laughs> planet. <laughs> Welcome back to Scoundrels, Inc., where we're talking about the Bad Batch episode... What is it, 12? Episode... <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Um, another... I, I liked the episode. Yeah. L- like, I liked it. Uh, I felt episode. like we're not going to have a whole lot to extrapolate on this one, and that's fine. I still liked it. I think it is setting up for the next week. Uh, well, today's with- episode, I'll be playing the role of Kevin Smets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Filler. <laughs> To, to clarify, Brandon didn't see this episode. So. <laughs> well, he did. Well, like, it was on an hour ago. It was on. He I didn't, tried he didn't to watch. watch it. Oh, that's it. right. He did. I did put on the subtitles for you. I looked at it as it was playing, and then you looked up baseball. Don't worry, I, I, don't I got worry, nothing. Yes, the world it. baseball classic, man. Yeah. What's um, more entertaining, them like on Vacation Island or Team USA versus Columbia? Uh, well, yeah. Brandon, this was an integral episode to the character development and the future of the clones, which is something we've long speculated about here. On I don't the, really on care. <laughs> why, why, why are you the way that you are? <laughs> <laughs> why are you that way? Uh, no, real, real, <laughs> I uh, mean, we're going to keep it brief. Yeah, we are. Um, so I'll just say this about the episode. I think it it definitely is setting up for... Very sad things for to come on the next on next week's episode. Um, I did enjoy, and it was a little kind of. This episode did make me feel a little uneasy, only because it was so calm and nice for uh-huh. the Bad Batch. I was like, man, this, you, this stuff just doesn't it doesn't work out. For, do, right? Do we have confirmation that the next episode's set here as well? No, or you're just but guessing. I did see a tweet that indicates that this and next week's episode tied together because they have been like all the 13 of them have been released uh, prior except for the last two so people when they tweet out about it uh, I try not to look at them but I did on this one and uh, I go okay well sure Um, but I I really enjoyed this episode if only because you got to see Omega as a kid uh, which she never really has even though it texts like what's wrong with that we didn't have that I'm like bro look how you turned out (laughs) like you could have a little bit of a childhood It, it would both you know you might have a different um, outlook uh, on life if you had a little bit of a childhood, even <laughs> though you were raised to be a, a, a soldier your entire life, unfortunately. Um, but for Omega to have like this time as a kid, I thought was really sweet. And uh, the people of Habu, um, you know, just a peaceful life. And it's like, damn, they think they think they're they're living a peaceful life, which they are, and they think nothing bad's gonna happen. They're safe there. I'm like, man, we saw this in Andor. We see this. In, in in rebels, we see this in all all series. You are not immune from the wrath of the empire that will eventually find you. And I think that's what this episode did was set up this peaceful kind of hey, we're Cloud City, we're out of the purview of the Imperials. Don't worry about us. We have a great thing going on here. Um, no, they're gonna find you, and then it's they gonna be you. bad. And I'm kind of dreading next week's episode just because the people of Pabu are not gonna. Uh, deserve what's coming to them from the Empire, and the Bad Batch might feel bad about that because they are going to feel like they brought it upon them, but we'll get to that next week, maybe, possibly. I don't know. So, so I, I think it's so interesting that... I, I think you're going to agree with what I'm about to say. Okay. Uh, but I, I I find it so interesting that you and I took very different things away from this episode. Okay. Because your focus was on um, Omega. Yeah. Whereas for me, the more impactful thing was seeing the clones' interactions with the people of um, Pabu. Mm. Right? Like we're seeing, I mean, we're seeing fucking tech actually have a romantic subplot. Arc that was, yeah, here, that, right? I thought that was going like, on like there. To the I was point like, during my nap. <laughs> like, like to the point Jesus. where, to the point where like Wrecker acknowledges it and uh, like even, even tech acknowledges it to an extent. And like Wanda Sykes character, whose name keeps Fee. escape fee. Thank you. Uh, like fee is like outright, like, no, like this is I'm, Hey, I'm doing this. Everyone, I'm stating it outright, just so y'all know, right? Um, you know, we see uh, Hunter actually, like, embracing this and looking around him. He and, says like, to Omega, go have fun. I was like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. Like, here for you to say, Like, bro. Hunter's like, oh, yeah, this, there is something to this. And Fee's pointing out to Tech and Hunter, like, isn't this nice? Couldn't you see this? 
Can't you yeah. tell that Omega needs this, right? And, uh, you know, Wrecker just wants food and booze. <laughs> yeah, I love this Which place. is fine. I'll never like, be hungry again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> said that about Kashyyyk, too. I know. Yeah. I was like, dang. Well, well, and that's the thing is, is there, this is why we've talked about it so much on the show, is because it keeps being set up like, what are their lives going to look like after, right? And I think this is the first time for me that I've gone like, huh, I think this had an actual impact for them. Right. Yeah. Because I think the other episodes, they had a mark, you know, small marginal impact. Whereas I feel like this one was the first time that they're like, you know what? They got a glimpse We and we and they could see it. Mm-hmm. They got a glimpse and they took notice of it yeah. because I think they had a glimpse on the 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 racing episode and on the Kashyyyk episode and a few other places. I think they all had a glimpse of what life will look like after. And I think that's intentional that this is something that we should talk about so much about the show, because if it wasn't intentional, then why would a whole other subplot of the show be the life for clones after yeah, being totally, totally clone troopers? That's what we're talking about. Like the decommission of clones and what happens to them. This clone was, troopers. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, it's also I, kind of, res- kind of resembles a little bit of like that lone cowboy or samurai coming into town and then like helping out the people. Oh, you mean you every, know? every, <laughs> every um, fifth episode of a Star Wars show, yeah. the Mandalorian, <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. It's every fifth episode you know? of a Star Wars. So show. like, yeah, a classic thing, and like, um, so yeah, I re- I do think the episode is a, a sweet uh, story and a hopeful one, but also it's going that think that's just gonna. gonna die. I don't think they're all gonna die. I just think that next week's episode on the Empire, I think, is gonna show up on this place and it's gonna suck. Who do you think bites it? Omega. I think Fee. I think f- um who's the the um the, the, older, the older the older dude. The old guy, the governor. The old, I forgot. Yeah. I think he's Yeah. If you want to yeah. traumatize every kid on the planet, you kill Omega. <laughs> <laughs> uh, every kid. <laughs> no, every kid. not every kid. I think like a very small fraction of kids actually watch this well, show. Every kid loves this show. Oh, whatever. Do they? All the kids I meet. How, How many, many kids, kids do you mean? <laughs> Why are you meeting kids? Like I said, why are you you? Why are you why are you do the things <laughs> Who you Who are you today? Listen, I'm just I'm just hoping that you know they're like, oh, we're gonna rebuild this place. And it's like what until like another like tsunami. You hits? know what? I will say Brandon had a really good <laughs> build point. a seawall around that place. Maybe they will. It. Maybe they will. I know it's not gonna keep the kaiju out, but it'll keep <laughs> the freaking <laughs> Did you just make a fucking Pacific Rim reference? Yeah. Yeah, you did. God you did. damn it. Uh, all right, guys, we got some we got some questions. So we're going to hit all of the questions from Mando and Bad Batch. Mm-hmm. And everything uh, in between, I think. And everything in between. We yeah. got a few other, like, yeah, ancillary Ask questions. Ask me about my well, personal life. Why not? Why um, are you the I've way been, that you are? You know, well, hold on. <laughs> I've been begging people to ask us about Brandon's personal life <laughs> every week. Guys, if you want to send us questions about Brandon's yeah. personal life, Please feel free. We'll make a separate channel in the Discord. If you want me Brandon's to tutor you life in algebra, Q&A. also, I'm pretty good at that. At what? Um, at what? Tutor, tutor you in algebra. I could tutor in algebra. What's X plus Y? Those are two variables. They could be. Dang, he's good. Though. He knows his stuff. Dang, dang. I was okay. Gonna, I was gonna say A Z equals three. Mm-hmm. Z equals one. Yeah. What is f- find Y? How, what? What's the equation? I just don't worry about it. <laughs> if Y is one, Y equals one. Mm-hmm. A equals three mm-hmm. and it's a plus b equals y find b i think i said that right i don't know all right anyways hey guys <laughs> you uh, did say that right but i'm too tired it, for speaking this. of a bet let's go to a better question yeah right? write that, it down please, from, please. Uh, interrupt at that point from yeah. darth kitty uh, darth or kitty anyways 20 bucks um, an hour <laughs> uh <laughs> bo katan <laughs> went from no clan a loner castle to oh my f g it's a mythosaur to no castle to being accepted into a into a uh, covert and and a new home. Do you think that she'll mention the myth of Sword of the Armor? Also, actually, let's do this. Let's Just read the question. <laughs> Can you read the there question? There are two separate unrelated questions. So okay. first question, do okay. you think she'll bring up the myth of Sword of the Armor? And expanding on that, do you think she'll bring it up to anyone? Bring, she'll bring it up to um, Grogu. And then he'll just go, Pato! <laughs> Pato! <laughs> Um, I do not, because as we talked about last episode, I think she has selfish, um, mm-hmm. uh, a selfish goal for um, believe her anyway. The Mythosaur, Din. Um, I yeah, think Din's a sucker. I think at one point the armor 
and Bo-Katan are getting into a heated argument. And then Bo's going to be like, I saw the mythosaur. You did it. I was there. I never knocked on nobody. (laughs) Yeah. And Bo's going to throw it in the armorer's face. And then the rest of the culprits going, (gasps) the mythosaur? Did you watch um, House of the Dragon? Yes. It's like the white stag in the kingdom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You lost me. You gotta watch. You, know, you didn't TV. watch House of Dragon. I saw the first episode. That is it. Oh, you okay. should watch the second episode with the White Stag. Yeah, yeah. I'm too busy watching Succession. You know? <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. Okay. That theme song smacks. But I, but I do think I think it's she's gonna throw it in her face or throw it in someone's face. You don't you don't you know, that she saw the slaps the House of the Dragon. It's got a great theme song. Does it? Yeah, it's the it's same insane. one they use for the other show. Game Probably not as good as Succession. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Um, uh, the next question, which does sort of build on that one, but it's a separate question. Okay. Uh, and they said, I have, I have a fleeting thought. Forgive me for not knowing canon, but could the armorer be Bo's mother? Ooh. Whoa. Uh, okay. Mama. So I don't think that's the case. However. Okay. I like this part. Okay. However, I like Frank's look when he, when he went to like theory mode. Yeah. I'm going to present the fact. I'm going to do what I tried to do last episode <laughs> and present the facts as they are. Okay. We know jack shit about Bo Katan's mother. The only thing we know about Bo's family prior to last episode was that Olmec's her uncle. Satine Kreese is her was her was was her sister. <laughs> it was yeah. And Obi Wan Kenobi was her almost brother in law. And that well, uh, and that her dad died. We found out last yeah. episode yeah. anything about her dad. And that he died. Defending Mandalore Defending in some Mandalore. way, form or fashion. So no things we, things we don't know. know. Jack shit about her mother or Jack shit about who the armorer is. That's true. Also, the armorer doesn't take off her fucking helmet. That's true. So no one knows what, what she looks like. She's actually Satine. Hashtag Satine lives. Get it going. <laughs> Get it going, folks. I would be I so it. pissed. Honestly, I would be <laughs> so pissed. I'm sorry, because it just takes away from the Obi-Wan Satine relationship and all that oh you're saying if Satine lives yes no yeah. okay sorry but what, what, how would you feel if the armor was bo Tan's mother I don't know how, I mean, how I old feel. is the armorer it's like it's like almost it's like uh don't it's, know it's like a bo Tan's like what 50 uh bo Tan <laughs> like is <laughs> younger than Satine and Obi-Wan but not by much so yeah I don't know late Probably mid forties. It would be like like Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, all over again. How old is Katie Sackhoff? Do you know? It doesn't matter how old she I, is. I you bro. never ask a woman in her age. You can only ask a Mandalorian. Yeah, in their yeah. age. <laughs> I've never asked. Uh, Mandalorians know. don't see gender. They or see age. they see the way and <laughs> no way, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> again, I ask. Again, I ask the people. Who are you? Why are you the way that you are? That's what I'm asking. That's my question. This is the way. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> Um, it, I think yeah, that. What do you feel? Yeah. Okay, so my answer to the question, I like it. I don't. We don't know who her mother is, so I love it as a crazy harebrained I feel like theory. The armor would have to be like seventy. <laughs> it's just not like seventy, okay. and she's like. Well, even if she's like fighting giant turtle well, monsters with even axe. if she's like sixty five, it still works. Or or early a little 60s, messed up, but yeah, even <laughs> early sixties, it still works, right? Like I guess. Like and Batman. she is she is played off as someone wiser. And with this depth mm-hmm. of knowledge and tradition, so I don't think it's po- I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that she is on the older end of the spectrum sure. for the rest of oh, the covert, sure. right? Um, I do think it's doubtful, but man, if it was, if it was, I think it's a really interesting. Would be uh, quite I, I think it's really wrinkle. interesting. Yeah, and I don't mm-hmm. think anything currently disproves that. In there, there may be something in you know a comic or a whatever somewhere that I'm missing. Newspaper but, article, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, all those Star Wars <laughs> newspaper yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. articles. Um, next question is from Maddie Gunner. Heard, heard of him. him. I've heard of him. Why are you um, the way that you are, you know? Uh, as a Mandalorian, you cannot take off your helmet. Never. But what happens if you take off the rest of your armor and just Ow, leave bow, on the helmet? Hell This yeah. is the way. Uh, I mean, hey, <laughs> look, Maddie. This is the way, way. Maddie, you and I both know those Mandalorians have to procreate somehow. I mean... I thought they just. I'm like, just gonna leave it they at that. Snatch I, yeah, yeah, other I they just snatch kids. <laughs> they're like they're like the first order, but with yeah. nice intentions. But nice. <laughs> Sorry. Um, well, here's here's the other thing about um, we know something about how Mandalorian um, like they don't steal kids; they find kids. Yeah, they're, they're foundlings. foundlings. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, we know something about how Mandalorian. Oh no, I found this kid and he has no parents because well, I killed them. Hold on, we do know we do know Mandalorians have family lines and do put a big sure. So sure. so mm-hmm. they definitely mm-hmm. procreate, right? Mm-hmm. We also know how Mandalorian armor is closed up and put on, and like. Look, you just you gotta could, make some flaps take, in the right places, it, and well, what you're I'm saying good is, to go. What I'm saying of it, none of it has a closure around the neck. Yeah, there's so what you we call don't have to, in the armor. You don't have to take off the hel- the the helmet to take the rest of it off. You don't. So you're totally right, Matt. So do like, they smell? They act, how do they wash okay, their clothes? I was just thinking this last night, and how Why? fucking dumb <laughs> this is, right? Like, how often does Din Djarin wash his face? He brush doesn't. His teeth. He doesn't. He has to. He no, does take off his helmet once in a while to like eat. You see him in How that he episode not- on Sorgan when he's in that hut and they bring him food and then she's like, I'll I'll leave so you can eat. And then you see him take off his yeah. helmet, place it on the windowsill, and he's eating. As long as no one sees you without your helmet, then you're good. Yeah. And I, I would like to think Otherwise armor Otherwise breath would stink some- up that helmet. <laughs> I'm sure it's ventilated. You know. boop, 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 boop. <laughs> yes, one of those little Christmas trees in there. <laughs> <laughs> little the tiny little, Christmas yeah, tree air fresh evergreen <laughs> trees things. Their yeah. helmets have to be air conditioned, right? They are. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even the ones you see at like Comic Con are air conditioned. Some of them. Most most of them. I think you put how in do you a little. Think they com- keep it on all day. Slick. You but put it, you put in a little computer. How fan. do you talk to anybody though? Just like. Bzzz, uh, you, you. They're also mics. <laughs> <laughs> they. Uh, yeah, I've heard some people like, liked up. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um. Uh, speaking of speaking of uh, Jesus, speaking of again, dumb, I ask, why are you the way that you are? That's what I'm asking. Uh, speaking of dumb costume choices, uh, Darth Mono uh, had a question: What on earth? What what do the buttons on Earth Vader's? What on earth do the buttons on Vader's? No, nope, that's not what this says. What do the buttons <sighs> do on Mitch Earth Vader. Vader? Oh, it auto corrected. So, what do the buttons do on Darth Vader's chest? Yeah, uh, I think one of them uh, does Netflix. <laughs> like my my remote does it. I don't see why the buttons on Vader's chest. Don't it is interesting. Like, what part of his cybernetic body need, would he need? Like settings. Well, uh, Mono has a suggestion for us. Okay. Does one of them like do a helium voice effect? Are they voice changing options? Because that's not Anakin's voice, right? Right. So that was an intentional voice modulator they put mm-hmm. in. I like to, to make think, him sound cooler. I like to think that uh, his voice was severely. His cords were yeah. damaged, and it's they have to. The, he has a voice module that tries to correct it back to Anakin's voice, but it takes a they lot had, of. They had to okay, modulate his voice what? because otherwise, like no one it would take him seriously. Doesn't make sense. No, Sean. nobody this would take is... him seriously because he'd be like, "You're part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. <laughs> take her away." Well, or, like, or it, doesn't, it, was, uh, it doesn't match the suit. It wouldn't work. Or it if it was Sebastian Shaw from uh, yeah, uh, Return from Return, Return. yeah. yeah. Uh, he's just so nice and yeah. Like, yeah. Like, soft spoken. What did he have? Um, <laughs> I think right. one of them plays the Imperial March. Sure. <laughs> I think one of them does uh, like cool. the other one does rave mode. Rave mode where all the lights flash and I'd like to think one of them calls like his tie, just like okay, beep. that's an actual good answer. Now, you know? I, it, is <laughs> there that's the first good yeah, rational answer? Yeah, you know. is there like an in universe? answer though i'm sure there is it. i feel like i'm sure there is i saw the question and i didn't right, look like it up part of like, i thought this was funny. part of like darth vader's suit being designed the way that it is it's like it's not like a perfect suit like right like he's supposed to be uncomfortable yes because it like helps him channel the dark side right Never also mind. the emperor is a dick and wants him to be uncomfortable yeah so that he'd be more powerful which is funny because it's like well, anakin darth you have the power to like adjust your suit buddy like nah. so maybe like maybe like one of the buttons like restricts his oxygen like just a little bit enough to tick him off <laughs> and then like he like channels the dark side more when he needs to like like that scene in no the dark side it, button that, yeah. that, that, more that, dark that side. like that scene in spider-man homecoming where he's like okay spider-man okay like every once in a while he needs to flip a switch get himself real hyped up <laughs> be like okay vader okay vader and that's why he chokes people is to pump them up remember remember when you were a kid <laughs> he's you trying had to be the, motivational uh, yeah when you were a kid you ever have those shoes that you pumped up on, on like the tongue of your shoe you no. hit the, the basketball on like the tongue of your shoe and it would yeah. pump up and uh-huh. it would tighten your i mean your i didn't shoe. have them but i know what you're talking and about they would like, kind of like tighten your mm-hmm. shoe a little bit I think that one of those buttons does that, just tightens his the, yeah. the, the suit up. Like, it <laughs> too. <laughs> it's, no, no, no. It's like one of those really bad... He walks uh, around like that kid in a Christmas story. <laughs> well, I was going to say, it's like one of those really bad superhero costumes you would have got as a kid with the fake muscles and oh, the fake yeah, abs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He hits the button and it pumps up his muscles and his fake abs. Because if you look at 
uh, Revenge of the Sith. He's much slender Vader because yeah. it's, it's actually Hayden in the well, suit. And because he hasn't hit the button very much yet. <laughs> he hasn't hit the button he hasn't, he's, yeah. he's still young. He's still, yeah. Um, uh, IT Nama has an uh, uh, interesting question. Okay. Would you rather live in the Old Republic hmm. or the New Republic? And oh. I wanna, I'm going to give the three options here. Would you rather live in the Old Republic, the Republic, or the New Republic? Because I think that's what they mean when mm-hmm. they say Old Republic. Whereas, especially on Pre- this show... Prequel? Yeah, I was going to say... Republic mm-hmm. is o- well, prequel? Old Republic refers I... to anything pre-Empire, technically. But right. on this show, because of our association with Kevin, mm-hmm. the Old Republic takes on a greater meaning What of era of the New Republic? Era? Pre-Rise of Skywalker or post-Rise of Skywalker? I think pre-Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Because we don't know anything post-Rise of Skywalker. All I know is that the First Order is officially gone, so... For be pretty order. nice. <laughs> um, what would my answer be? Which which one lasted the longest? I guess as long as I'm not on Hosnian Prime. Well, so the Republic lasted a very, very, very long over time. a thousand generations. They did yeah, that's the audience of peace because the old Republic fed into the new. Uh, it's one you know the High Republic contiguous. That's a nice. Oh, time. well, that's that's all one. My point is that's all one contiguous. So I would say the Republic. Mm-hmm. Because if you do the High Republic, you lose great things like hyperspace travel. Oh, yeah. I don't, yeah convenient I hyperspace yeah, I want, travel. I want that. High I Republic that. doesn't have hyperspace travel. Not convenient hyperspace travel. How do people get from one place to another? How do you even have a Republic with representatives? That's kind of the point of the, the book series. Um, that makes no damn sense. They use they use different methods of... of they don't have Nava computers yet. Mm-hmm. So you can only travel through beacons, basically. So you've got these big broadcast antennas. Um, the first book is called, it's called Light of the Beacon, right? Uh, Light of the Jedi. Light of, Light of the Jedi. Yeah, but it talks about but Starlight Beacon. Starlight Beacon, yeah. It's about called. Starlight Beacon Do getting we, blown yeah, up. Yeah. The beacons are lit. So Starlight Gundor Beacon. calls for aid. Starlight Beacon is this big giant space station that's broadcasting mm-hmm. hyperspace coordinates for your ship to lock on to get to that part of space. Interesting. Um, and the first book is all about that blowing up and the repercussions of that and that's what the first you know spoilers i haven't finished that book yet but i'm kind of so. i'm just picturing like yoda in his <laughs> hut on dagobah but like, I, I know where it's going but yeah. like i, I picture yoda on his hut in dagobah and like luke's tucking him in and he's just like you know luke when i was when I- a kid we didn't have hyperspace travel but like sure yoda let's get you to bed <laughs> <laughs> yeah. sure grandpa you know luke when i was a 75 year old kid <laughs> Um. Uh. Yeah, I think I I'd say the Republic. Yeah, I want. I want the one well, with that, the best. But is food. that is that pre Clone Wars? Which one has though? the best food? I think the Republic. Okay, let's go. Is that, that. pre Clone Wars or during the Clone? Wars? I mean, up to and including the Clone Wars. I don't want to be around during the Clone Wars. That sounds awful. It's like the two hundred years leading up to. You know, it's 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 a there's a big span mm-hmm. there of mm-hmm. when the Republic is during the Phantom Menace. That's where I'd like to be. Sure. Uh, Just not on Tatooine. If you had to choose, what's your favorite piece of concept art from across the movies Ooh. and TV shows? This is from Prodigal Ooh. Knight 777. Um, I don't remember most of it, but I have a mo- my background on my uh, computer at home is a Macquarie piece of um, two Y Wings flying into the Death Star. Like flying. Mm-hmm. Their attack oh, yeah, the yeah, Death yeah. Star. And I love that piece. There's a lot of Macquarie art that I love. Um, Rebels does a great job of using yes Macquarie Macquarie. concepts. Um, it's really hard to say because I well I think I'll probably lean more towards the prequel um, concept art like Doug Chang's mm-hmm. concept art. I think that's future really, friend of the show. Future friend of the show, Doug Chang. I really love that art a lot. I think um, the concept art that they show at the end of Mandalorian is awesome. Like if you're not watching that part which I consider part of the episode. If you're not watching that and you're a Star Wars fan, as a Star Wars fan, you're doing yourself a disservice by not watching those those credits, those that concept art. There is a Twitter uh, handout profile out there that you can follow that, has, that always tweets out a bunch of different concept art, which is really mm-hmm. great. Because it's just, it's all really it's all good. good. It's just all good stuff. It's all but... machine, partner. <laughs> uh, there's a really good one. Uh, uh, <laughs> I have the, the shirt of the X-Wing concept art. Mm. Um, that I really like. It's um, I think it's a Joe Johnston. Uh, Interesting. Future friend of the show. Future friend of the yeah. show. 
Yeah, yeah you can't go wrong with really. I mean, like I, I really enjoyed some of the Rogue One stuff just because it was. Um, that was. I mean, yeah, a lot of the stuff for for um, so good. A lot of stuff for Force Awakens. Was really oh, good too. definitely. Before they had like before they knew who was before they had the design set and before they knew who was going to be the actors if, and stuff. If I could play the Kevin Smets on the show, I would say Trevor Rose. Uh, concept art for his <laughs> Duel sure. of Fate script, especially well, the the uh, Hux um, concept art of him, like yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? I mean, yeah, the Seppuku stuff, whatever. Yeah. Well, um, I was going to say you can see uh, some of that concept art realized in person at Galaxy's Edge because that big First Order shuttle is not from anything; it's from Trevorrow's movie. Oh, really? Yeah, I did not. So that's that. from that's based on concept art from Trevorrow's movie. Because when they were making Galaxy's Edge, they hadn't replaced the director yet, I so see, they were I still see. working from Trevorrow's uh, script. Interesting from the, from his development and then, stage. And I then guess. when they changed writer director, gotcha, gotcha, they didn't gotcha. remove it from the park. They just cool. left it. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Um, interesting. That's from Prodigal Knight seven seven seven. Cool question. Uh, yeah. Question. I love Doug Chang question. stuff all day every day. Future yeah. friend of the show. Um, I I think all the prequel era stuff is so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I mean. Fuck each set of concept art. Is, it really like it's so. I don't. It's, it's all the N one because bro. each each set of concept art is so interesting for a completely different reason. Like, and you can group it by trilogy, and you get a very different vibe from all the concept art. And what's interesting though about all the concept art is no matter where it was, what era it was made in, it somehow finds its way in a in another somewhere era else or somewhere else. Yeah. Where, like it all really ends up going together even though they were made in like well, and that's, decades or whatnot and that's you know? why i like rebels so much because all of rebels is done in the macquarie Macquarie's art style yeah, yeah. um and uh, even the droid even one of the droids in today's episode of um mandalorian yeah mandalorian is the 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 taxi droid is right, kind of right. in the style of sort that of, macquarie yeah. mm-hmm. um all right uh urden five wants to know urden. uh what happens to exegol after the rise of skywalker was it destroyed blown up or left behind Vacation destination. Uh, yeah, what? it becomes weird old vacation destination. I think it's just left. I think it's just left behind. Yeah. I think they got to blow it up. I think they got to blow it up. You think they got to? I, don't I think, think they, they have, have to. They don't have planet killing capability. Yeah, I don't think they have a way to. Um, I think it takes a really long time to blow it up. Okay. <laughs> I think hmm. they just chip at it every day. Well, although to be fair, there were still some intact Star Destroyers when they're done there, I'm sure. So, But then they have a Star Destroyer with planet killing capabilities. Um. I only say that they should destroy it because you don't want a place of pilgrimage for people to like mm-hmm. go and be like, remember when Palpatine was I don't know. That sounds like the re- religious I think persecution. Every, everyone everyone from care. the galaxy. Bad people. Because it, it's really hard to find, right? Exegol, unless you have Not the exact anymore. coordinates. Remember when thousands so of ships That's what I was going to say. I think every every <laughs> everyone from the galaxy that flew in to the Battle of yeah. Exegol, they have to sign an NDA. <laughs> <laughs> Lando was like, yeah, you sign this, baby. or they each have to take one shot at the planet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not even a thousand star destroyers could destroy a planet that size, or no. firepower. What's what's the line? Of, yeah, know? you're it's something like that. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying, right? <laughs> no, I don't know what to do with Exegol. <laughs> Leave it. I mean, I think they're asking what canonically happened, mm-hmm. also, and I think canonically we don't know, but I assume they just left it. And I don't think there's a. Like I'm sure eventually some guy will turn. I to mean, the, the, dark side the answer is they all go. leave and go party on. Yeah, yeah. on uh, Kefbeer. No, uh, whatever planet. My place. prediction is 50 years in the future. Agent Claus. Jet uh, Ray's apprentices apprentice turns to the dark side, wants to restart up the Sith, then goes on a pilgrimage to Exegol and finds Snoke. Starts. Yeah, he finds one of the clone Snokes in the Snoke. tube, wakes him up, tells him. Uh, it's your kid, Snoke. It's oh, not your did kids. you guys hear about this? What they added on Disney Plus added in Rise of Skywalker? No, what are you talking about? So, like in the scene when Another Kylo head blown around, when no, when Kylo is first goes first to Exegol, uh-huh. and you see and you're panning through. If you look, I forget in what frame. If you look all the way in the back, there's actually like you can see like the outline of like a baby Grogu. What are you talking about, man? Because the cloning you're, thing. You're saying that's there? I think you're lying. <laughs> yeah, I'm lying. Yeah, I yeah. was going to say, okay. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could fool Brandon. They, no. made, they made Snoke say McClunky. <laughs> <laughs> right? Right when he gets cut in half, he goes, Do I have to- <laughs> McClunky. <laughs> Do I have to go through this McClunky shit again? It's in episode one. 
Yeah, we're not saying it's not. Yeah. We're just saying Snoke's saying. But they, I'm not for. I'm not saying for you guys. I'm saying for those those people, the people on the Twitter. Oh, they okay. added it to a new hope, though. I know it's great. Yeah, yeah. it's really funny. We have any other? Because that was like the <laughs> no. La- no. That was like the last no, thing hey, that George I wanted. I got a question. Did you right? finish? Uh... I did it. Oh, George, Frank. George is like, I, I have. I have one last wish before flying to Disney. Yeah. Make Greedo yeah. say McClunky. You know, hey, if uh, look, uh, I want you to make sure that Greedo uh, reads off my um tombstone, and my tombstone's gonna say McClunky. So make Greedo say McClunky, please. Anyways, guys, if you like the show, please uh, like, subscribe, um, give us a comment. Give us a review over on the uh, Apple Podcast or Spotify or iHeart Radio or <laughs> Spoopify or Spoopifer or whatever you're listening to this on. You know, uh, check out my movie American Graffiti. It's my um, uh, it's my magnum opus. Um, there's some other movies I did that people apparently like. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like poetry. It rhymes. Um, uh, you f- find us on the Twitter, the TikTok, the Instagram. Um, and send us your questions over in the Discord. Yeah. yeah. Ask us about Sean's personal life, too. Okay. If Jar Jar works, the whole thing works. Pato. Scoundrel. Scoundrel. I like the sound of that. <laughs>